the beautiful College Inn Porterhouse in Chicago's famous hotel, Sherman. It's time now for your family to join the millions of families from coast to coast and listen to America's favorite, Don McNeil and his Breakfast Club. And now here he is, your Toastmaster, Don McNeil. Good morning, Breakfast Club. Good morning, Julia. We woke up bright and early just now. How do you do, ya? First call to breakfast for all of you out there. America, wake up, Breakfast Club. Well, good morning to you all. Isn't it uh, great that we have people and students from so many different places here this morning? And I'm very sorry that Dick Noel isn't here to greet him, but Dick had a kind of a bad throat uh, yesterday, and he has a strep throat, so he's at home resting up so that he'll be able to come back here again and be with you on Monday morning. Uh, before I get to these groups here, I want to kind of get my the groups in place so I know who is where and which is why, because I'm going to ask you, and I want you to be thinking about this particular question thought it'd be interesting to ask a spokesman from each one of these classes that I mentioned. This question, describe uh, how you think you might look and live when you've reached the peak of success in life. I want to hear some of those answers. And I'm going to do it here in just a minute. Right now, it's four and a half minutes past eight Chicago time. Folks from Martinville, Minnesota, coming up here, please. Select one of your group. Uh, and I'd like to talk to Rita Kriz... K-R-Z... Krizuina, is that it? From uh, Wausaukee, Wisconsin, too. All right, two young ladies uh, coming up here. One is... Uh, oh, she's leaving. Goodbye. Uh, the other one is coming up here, though, I believe. You are Rita? Shavina. Rita Shavina from... Uh, Wasaki. Yes. Nice to see you, Rita. Uh, Rita, I do. You asked me a question on uh, on the card, and I thought it might be a good way to start out the program with a couple of real funny jokes. She wrote on the, on the program, "Do you want to hear a couple of dillies?" And I, <laughs> I certainly would. Uh, I do. Uh, would you tell me a couple of dillies? Dilly dilly. What? Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Thank you. <laughs> There. Let's see it there. You are, uh... Jerry Dober from Martin. <laughs> Jerry Dober. Jerry, uh, are you in athletics there at all in the school? Yes, I participate in some. W which, baseball, basketball? Oh, baseball, football, basketball. It works, huh? Yeah. Jerry, uh, you are going to graduate this year, and then what are you going to do? Don't know for sure yet. Huh? I don't know for sure yet. College, I suppose. Good. I hope you make it. Have you been accepted in any college yet? They haven't applied for admission yet. Oh, well, you better, <laughs> better get around to it, boy. A lot of other fellows are doing the same thing. All right, Jerry, uh, what's your last name? Dobert. Jerry Dobert. Uh, Jerry, uh, the question this morning for uh, you high school guys is, and gals is this. Uh, years from now, I don't know how many years it'll be in your case, when you've reached the peak of your success, what are you going to look like and think like and uh, be like? Just describe yourself as you think you might be. Oh, I suppose selling apples down on Straight Street or something like that. Uh, <laughs> well, Sam has uh, almost got there, but he never quite made it. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, what would uh, what would you like to be? Oh, in the engineering field, suppose somewhere, I suppose. The engineering field. Yeah. I can just see you now sitting up in the big skyscraper in New York. You've got engineers working for you all over the country. Sure. Your wife is at home with your 16 children waiting for you. Oh, well, at least that many. Yeah. At least that many. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. a good start. <laughs> How much a uh, year do you think you'd be making there? Ten years from now? Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know, maybe twelve, fourteen thousand. Why, sure, it's a snap, no trouble at all. <laughs> and boy, it depends on the price of apples. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> okay, Jerry, lots of luck to you, whatever you want. <laughs> Well, if you're not selling apples, maybe you'll be in the Air Corps. Oh! oh. oh All right, let's get to a young gal who's only been out of high school herself for three years, hasn't reached the pinnacle of success yet, but is certainly on her way. Carol Ann Jarvis. This particular uh, tune that you're going to sing for us, Carol Ann, this morning is... This is your record, isn't it? Yeah, this is the other side. This is the other yeah, side of the uh, one you a sang. A record. Okay, and what's it called? <laughs> Lover Boy. Oh, say, uh, no, I, I was going to say maybe I'll get one of these fellas up here, but there are too many Lover Boys. In <laughs> you just take it to all of them. Lover Boy, Lover Boy, you're my Lover Boy, Lover Boy, Lover Boy, Lover Boy, Lover Boy. When you hold me in your arms, I melt away. Every inch of me wants you to stay. almost ran out of ammunition there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot of wind. Very nice. Lover boy. By the way, that snarling saxophone. Uh, and there was played by uh, by Lee Knight, who's going to get a... What? Knight the Hawk. The Hawk. Is that what he's called? The Hawk? Why do you call him the Hawk? Huh? Look at him. <laughs> Hope you're able to afford a new read tomorrow, Lee. Let's get uh, a representative of Lewiston and Emmons, Minnesota, out there. Better do these two at a time here, so I'll be sure and get them all on. Lewiston and Emmons, Minnesota, since their senior classes here, I'd like to see a representative from each. Here comes one. Where's the other? Uh, come right up here, sir. And uh, the teacher's looking around there. Oh, boy. Come on, get up here, she said. Come on, get up there, get up there. Get up there, the man's calling. There we are. All right. Uh, let's see who we have here. Francis Smithhuber. And you're from? Emmons. All right, Francis. Uh, you are about to get out of the place? Yeah, I hope so. Where you spent four happy years. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Francis, uh, right over here, please. I want you to meet... Uh, Donna Ray Meyer. From? Lewiston. Yeah. Francis, Donna Ray. All right, we'll start, uh, we'll start with you now, Francis, since you were up here first. Two years from now, we'll not say how many, you've reached the pinnacle of your success. Where will you be, do you think? Uh, how much will you be earning? Uh, what kind of a family will you have? What will you be doing? What are you going to look like? Oh, I think I'll just rent a hotel room and stay there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean? For the next uh, tw 10, 12 years? Uh, well, I don't know how, how I'm going to make money then, but when I get top of my success, that's what I'll do. 
when you get to the top of your idea of the reaching the pinnacle of success is be able to rent a hotel room. <laughs> You ought to get together with that guy who sells apples there. You guys can do well, yeah. Uh, I tell you what, uh, I want to uh, I want to pursue this a little bit. You you interest me. Uh, supposing you two sit down here, and I'll get to you in the next quarter hour, and we'll pursue this a little further, okay? okay. Fine, just sit right down and think things over now. At Thirteen and a half minutes past eight, Chicago time. Donna Meyer from uh, Lewiston, Minnesota, right? Right. Uh, sitting next to me now, one of the senior class gals. And uh, you tell me about yourself when you reach the peak of your career. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm going to be a teacher. Oh, that's great. What are you going to teach, do you think? Uh, third grade. You got the grade and everything all Yeah, I guess so. Have you got the job? No. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? That's your ambition, to teach the third grade? Yes. Would you like to go on up? Fourth, fifth, sixth? Fifth? No. Why did you, why'd you pick the third grade? Well, because then they know something, but yet they are too smart for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. Well, Donna, uh... You can see yourself, can you, let's say 10, 15 years from now, uh, teaching the third grade? Yes, I guess so. Well, supposing that, uh, supposing there was a man who was teaching the fourth grade, and uh, <laughs> he was a nice-looking fella, uh, just kind of your type. What is your type, by the way? Any man at all. Well, that's what I mean. I didn't see that. I know you did. <laughs> uh, so you and this fellow start going steady, and pretty soon you get married. Does that sound good? Sounds very good. Yeah. <laughs> but you keep on teaching the third grade, and he keeps on teaching the fourth grade. And by golly, before many more years, you and this fellow start populating the kindergarten. Oh, my God. And pretty, <laughs> pretty soon, and in, uh, in several more years after that, you're teaching your own children in the third grade. Does this sound good? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You've just heard the story of your life. <laughs> Well, let's see if it turns out that way, huh? Okay. Okay. I didn't uh, quite finish uh, with this uh, uh, gentleman here who's going to be in the hotel room for the next 15 years. And, <laughs> by the way, why don't you make it to Sherman? Uh, but better put in your application soon because they're pretty well filled up here. Uh, your name was Francis... Uh, Smith Huber. Yes, from uh, Emmons, Iowa. Uh, Francis, you're, look, you're such a serious-looking guy. Do you always look like that? Oh, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I suppose. Really? <laughs> I mean, uh, after all, it, it's kind of restful to smile once in a while. <laughs> Rest the face, you know. Have you been up all night? No. No. How much of the night were you up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Most of the night, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that's probably what you had in mind when you said you want to stay in a hotel room for the next day. <laughs> yeah. Want to get some sleep, huh? Now, seriously, what is your ambition, Francis? Oh, I like to go to college. Good. And then uh, study what? Engineering. Engineering. Fine. We've got another engineer coming up here. How, how big a family would you like to have? Uh, I think I'm going to be a bachelor. <laughs> what have you got against girls? Oh, I don't... Huh? They're, they're, they're nice. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you, you just don't want to be tied up to one, eh? That's right. That's right, yeah. Well, it'll certainly be interesting to see, Francis, whether you uh, still retain your bachelorhood about 10, 15 years from now. Of course, if you never get out of that hotel room, you might at that. <laughs> nice to talk to both of you kids. Thank you very much. We'll get some more. In the... Very interesting. All right, now I'm going to ask you all to join me, if you will, in a moment of silent prayer, each in his own words, each in his own way, for a world united in peace. Let us bow our heads and pray. Amen. Now it's memory time around the breakfast table. This is Louise Keller, Paramount, California, sent this very short little poem in to me, and it's a good one. I guess God meant that we should kneel to do the things that make life good, to bathe the baby in his tub, to polish fragrant wood, to light a fire on the hearth, to tend a flower bed. God didn't make us reach for these. He just made us kneel instead. There 
is a spot in my heart which no other may own. There's a depth in my soul never sounded or known. There's a place in my memory, my life that you fill. No No one ever will. Sure, I love the dear silver that shines in your hair and the brow that's all furrowed and wrinkled with care. I kiss the dear fingers so toil worn. Caroline Jarvis singing for you. Caroline, we certainly have enjoyed having you as our guest singer of the week this week. Well, I just laughed for one whole week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great to have had you. And don't forget, Breakfast Clubbers, uh, as we bring you these new voices, uh, new to our program anyway, we're searching for the one to be a permanent member of our crew, and we're looking uh, to your comments, and thanks so much for the ones you've already sent in, your comments, your votes to help us decide for the right one. So let us hear from you. So far, let's see, uh, since Betty Johnson left us for Wedding Bells eight weeks ago, you've heard Wyoma Winters of Indianapolis, Eileen Rogers from Pittsburgh, Julie Vernon, Marshalltown, Iowa, Joan Fairfax from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Connie Francis from Newark, New Jersey, Maureen Arthur of St. Louis, Ginny Gibson of Rochester, New York, and this week, Caroline Jarvis of San Bernardino, California. Next week on The Breakfast Club, you'll meet a young gal from Fresno, California, and Leonardo. I hope that you'll be listening so you can help judge her along with the others. Uh, there will be quite a few others before we're through with this little uh, deal, too. Many times before you've given us your opinions, and such talented folks as Betty Johnson and Johnny Desmond and Eileen Parker and Peggy Taylor and Patsy Lee and others became uh, Breakfast Club regulars thanks to you. So let's not forget that we found Dick Noel in this very same way, and we hope Dick will be better very, very soon and back with us. Yes, sir, we're going to miss our old friend Stumbles, Dick Noel, who is out with a sore throat this morning. So he won't be marching, but Sam will and some of the gang here, and why don't you join him at home? Everybody march! good marching. And Mr. Peterson, as long as you're standing there... Yes, uh, sir, sir. Cliff Peterson, I was talking to, and as long as there's so many of the young people here from Minnesota this morning, I thought that uh, it would be kind of nice if you would sing their native chant for them. I would be very happy to, for all my friends. Friends, the Minnesota theme song by Cliff Peterson. <laughs> the 
sold the polka floating on the breeze. The men who sold the polka underneath the trees. The men who sold the polka were the ripping of the spray. With the coffee pot and the smoke is bored, we'll dance the night away. They cut down the tall pine tree and they made a floor to dance on. With the branches, they made a fire and then they put the coffee pot on. The men saw the polka floating in the breeze. The men saw the polka underneath the trees. The men saw the polka with the rippling waters play with coffee pot and a smorgasbord. They'll dance the night away. They'll dance the night away. They'll dance it far away. Oh, thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I hope you'll be able to go to Duluth someday, <laughs> your old hometown. You think they let me in? I think they will. <laughs> I think they'll let you back after that. Let's see what Aunt Fanny has on her mind this morning. Aunt Fanny, come in. <laughs> giving away something this morning in the shape of photograph records or what? <laughs> no, we got all these teenagers here, though. Well, you sure have. Yeah. I'll tell you, I've never saw so many in my life. All seniors. All, all the, the young ones that's in the high schools now, it's a full of life. Yeah. They're just wonderful. Now, when I was in school, uh, well, I got along all right, but Mert was always so bashful. Oh? So terrible shy. Is that so? She won a prize one time for being the shyest one in the class. Really? We never found out what it was. She was too bashful to go and get it. <laughs> but, but I think it's just wonderful to see young people out now the way they are. What uh, brings them here today? I mean, is the school out now? Uh, well, no, these are senior trips, you see, that they make before they graduate. What do they call that? Uh, I think they call them skip, uh, oh. skip trips. Oh, skip now, days. we never had that. Well, I saw many days I would have just as soon skipped. But uh, when we, now, in school, we had what we called, uh, it was a, a kind of a sneak day. Sneak day? Well, yes, when we left. And a whole bunch of us went out to a Dinglinger's Grove and Picnic Patch. Oh. We had a wonderful time there. We all sat around. We had an all-day sing and supper on the grass. My. Yes, we had, well, uh, I don't know which was uh, the kind of the most in the way, the mosquitoes or the chaperones. We had chaperones. Oh, yeah. Chaperones is people that's too old to get in the game, but they'd like to know the score. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've struck fertile ground here. <laughs> well, I uh, I ne never minded chaperones too much. No, I never did either. I just always thought it was none of their business. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, I don't know. People talk about young people today and... Uh, and uh, young people uh, in my long time, uh, in my uh, a few years few ago. Few years, of course, yes. And they say, oh, I just don't think that things is like they used to be. Well, now, you know, I don't have that feeling at all. Really? No, I think the same things is going on. I just think there's different people doing it. Well, I think that's right. <laughs> don't you? Yes, yes. But I look, I'll tell you, I look at these here <clears throat> young faces and these handsome young fellas and the beautiful girls, and it just makes me absolutely sick. <laughs> Goodbye, Aunt Patty. <laughs> Oh, that's terrific. Okay, Jean, what's your ambition? Uh, be a band teacher. Oh, you too, huh? Mm -hmm. You like uh, playing the band. What do you play? Clarinet and Clar piano. Clarinet? Oh, you and I ought to get together. I, I used to play clarinet too. Well, they caught up with me. <laughs> yeah, I may even play it again one of these days. Jean, uh, you want a family, of course. It'd be nice. Yes, I should. Say. <laughs> Have your own little band at home, huh? <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know whether I can afford that many or not. Really? Uh, well, you you might be, you'd probably be making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you? What do you think of music? Now you're a, you're a musician yourself. What do you think of some of this stuff like uh, a hound dog and uh, uh, sh all shook up? 
<laughs> How do you like that? Well, it's all right once in a while. Oh, but do you prefer, uh, what do you prefer? Oh, Dixieland. Dixieland. And classical music a little of it. Oh. Would you like us to give you a little shot of Dixieland here? I'd like it. Really we got one of the finest groups uh, for Dixieland you ever heard. See if, see if you think I'm right. Give them a little sample. <laughs> Yes, sir. They also play classical. Hey, they can even play hound dog if you want it. <laughs> Plenty of that stuff. Just one more morsel of advice for you graduating high school students. You'll be going out in the world now, you'll be searching for happiness, and let me show you how one fellow has found happiness. He writes jokes. He sends them in to me. His name is John Delaney, John Delaney in Cincinnati. Listen to how utterly happy this guy is. Listen. He says, a lady was frying a fish the other day, and the fish turned itself over in the frying pan. She figured it would because somebody had told her it was a Pennsylvania turnpike. <laughs> this man's happy. He's happy. Here's another one. He said, our neighbor has a box of tomato plants on the front of his car. He says he's hoping for a bumper crop this year. That's what it takes to make one guy happy. Have a wonderful time for yourselves over the weekend, and be sure and be with the Breakfast Club Monday. And speaking for the whole gang here, be good to yourselves. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.